Hello, welcome to a shortened version of our Power to Perform uh, presentation that we did for parents in early September of year 11. Now, this presentation goes through the importance of the home school partnership. It talks through some of the things that we're doing with students this year and some of the things you should look out for in our key subjects. Now, throughout the time at school, we try and embed the three core values in everything we do, respect, resilience and success. And of particular importance in year 11 are those last two, resilience and success. They are critical in ensuring that those GCSE outcomes in August of 2022 are as good as they can be. And so we'll be impressing upon students those throughout the next sort of 10 months. Now you're watching this already, so you probably don't necessarily need telling, but actually levels of parental engagement are consistently associated with children's academic outcomes. It's not about what jobs parents do. It's not about income or anything to do with that. It's about the level of engagement that people have with their children. It does not mean you need to be some sort of super parent. You don't need to know the courses inside and out, but it's showing that interest, taking uh, a look at what they're doing and engaging with children over, over their courses. That's the most vital thing. The number one parental impact can be on attendance. And we look at that figure there of 95% and think that's okay. But consider this, if you're absent from 5% of your uh, time at school, that's half a day of lessons every two weeks. It, it amounts to two weeks of lessons missed in a year. And actually that's about the same number of lessons as a, a whole year's worth of lessons for one GCSE subject. Teachers have to work through a specification to get children the qualifications, the GCSEs at the end of the year, and they won't have time to revisit every topic. So every, uh, every lesson is absolutely essential. There is no replacement for that input from the teacher initially. Um, you know, revision guides, great, but actually being there in the lesson, the original time it was gone through is the best thing that we can have. So please encourage your child to come to school every single day. 95% is not good enough. We really impress upon parents the, the need for your support, not just in learning at home, but also keeping those lines of communication open with us, letting us know if something's going on and, and likewise expect to hear from us if we have some concerns here too. Um, at, um, attending parents evenings, they'll be virtual again this year, absolutely vital. And if you want to get involved in any other school decision making, like the school governor, then please do get in touch. We are uh, we fully recognise the challenges of that parental role and the many different hats that parents have to wear and balance and, you know, to get that uh, harmony at home, um, including being the study buddy, the banker, the entertainment officer, the go between um, and interpreting the information that's often sent home as well. So we thank you for that and recognise how complicated and difficult it can be. And we also ask that you help in the ways listed here. Particularly of interest in, in year 11 is making sure that they're getting enough sleep, unplugging, taking a break, uh, not too much of a break, of course, but making sure that those phones are not dominating their lives as, uh, as we often tend to think they are. Getting familiar with the GCSE language is something we're going to help you with, but those things on the screen there will really help your child do the best they can this year. If you haven't already downloaded and um, filled in the information for the My Ed app, that's really great. You can get attendance, you can get um, achievement, behaviour information on there, and it's how we send reports to you. Please download it if you haven't already got it. And equally, what we used to call Show My Homework is now known as Satchel One. There's also an app for that. And so you can see what homework is being set. If they tell you they haven't got any, you can have a little look. In terms of student support, there are loads of people available to talk to and to get in touch with if you do have any concerns. The first point of contact should always be the form tutor. Um, and we've put the, the email addresses for who to contact on the screen. Ms Burley, the head of year 11, is fantastic if you have any sort of pastoral concerns. And we also have the support of Mrs Hunt, um, who is our assistant principal, and Miss Mason, who is new to the team this year, who looks after year 10 and 11. 
If you think the question is more related to a particular subject, get in touch with that subject teacher. And if you look for the latest school report, you'll be able to work out how to email them. Now, we are thinking about bridging gaps. We recognise that the last couple of years have been disrupted due to COVID. So how are we going to address that? Well, we're keeping it positive. We're making sure there's lots of low stakes quizzing and testing so that students feel happy and comfortable in showing their knowledge. And that is helping teachers identify where those gaps are and filling them. We've got a varied approach to, um, to getting students um, gaps filled. And we're also taking the positives gained from what we've learned from working from home. The Goldilocks principle then, making sure by doing that low skid eights quizzing that we're getting things just right. Not too easy, not too difficult, but just right. So finding what the gaps are uh, and ensuring students are up to speed. We're also interleaving topics much more than was uh, done prior to COVID. So we might well have taught a topic then completed a second topic over several weeks and gone through that throughout the year. But we recognise the need to spark students long term memory. So we're revisiting things much more regularly so that they can um, get a recap on it. And so we can ensure GCSE success. And this has been successful for the few months that we've been working on it. We also recognise that we need to grab some time efficiencies. So because we have to get through stuff and stuff done at home may not have been done in the level of detail we would have want. We're trying to grab those efficiencies through whole class feedback. There will, of course, be personalised marking, but you might find that some things the teacher looks at holistically and gives the group the strengths and weaknesses as a whole. This picture shows a class from about 1850 and um, those students may well not feel too out of place in classrooms today, a fairly similar setup, but we are pushing forward with the technological advances we made using Microsoft Teams, using assignments, and this will still be our method of delivery should students have to self-isolate this year and, and fingers crossed we don't have that. In terms of our plan for this year, well, let's uh, hear what we've got. It's a quite an intense year. There's lots going on between now and the 9th of May. I think there's something like 140 working days between now and that first GCSE exam. We tell students each year that they are part of a race and there's a couple of hundred thousand other students their age across uh, England um, that are taking GCSEs and they are in competition with them. And we show this side slide quite regularly. It's great because it shows the race, but also the ups and downs that come throughout year 11. Things don't always go to plan, things go well, and it's about how we are resilient to these changes. Now, the key dates. We have printed this up and these will be sent out with your child if you didn't get to pick one up on the evening. But it shows you where the tutor evenings are, where the parents' evenings are, when you can expect information about how well they're doing and effort data to be sent home. You can see when the PPEs, the pre-public examinations are, um, you might think of them as mock exams, but they're more important than that because in the past couple of years, the results of those have not been mock. They have been um, had to be used for generating GCSE results. Now, we hope that doesn't happen again for 2022, but it does show how important those particular exams are. Um, six form interviews for those that are looking to stay on, of which many do, there are important dates on there as well. Now, it's vital, as we've said, that we're not just concentrating on the exams, but we're also concentrating on the things that allow them to be successful. So the character information, uh, mental preparation, good habits and behaviours, health and physical well-being, all of these things sit together to enable the success in exams. And so we work with students on those throughout the year as well. Many students will apply for the sixth form, as I've just mentioned, but regardless of what your plans are for post-16, uh, we have a plan for that. So keep eyes open throughout the year for opportunities, deadlines for things like applications. Mr Holmes, our careers advisor, careers teacher, will be sharing opportunities. Discuss next steps at home, engage in that future course planning uh, and with us. And we, of course, will be on hand to help students apply for wherever they're going at the end of year 11. 
Now, some terms and strategies we use. Personal currency plans is something you will see this year. This is our way of showing students where they need to improve. So we take a three step approach. We diagnose the issue and that might be through a pre-public examination and we identify those areas. In this French example, these would be ticked. We then provide therapy. So how are we going to help them find out what they um, solve their issue? And that will be clearly detailed along with a retesting opportunity because there's no point doing all this if we don't then test that it's been successful at the end. So look out for personal currency plans after examinations. We also issue students with personalised learning checklists. In some subjects like math, they will already have seen these. So it's an opportunity for students to see what it is they need to know and to rag rate, red, amber, green, um, what they can and can't do. Students have a tendency to focus on things they can do and therefore enjoy, but actually this guides them to the amber and red areas they need to really focus on and provide, uh, and they need to ensure they've done enough revision in those areas. You'll also hear about walking, talking mocks this year. These are opportunities throughout the year, um, generally the day before or the morning of an exam, where we talk students through the key strategies they need for success in the exam. And we do this in an exam room as well. Students uh, sit in their normal exam seats and the teacher uses an overhead projector to go through the kind of things they should expect to see. Now it's unlikely that students will be invited to all of these, there just isn't the capacity, but they are likely to be exposed to several of them across the course of year 11. We also want students to be aware of the pitfalls, what they should and shouldn't look out for. And sometimes they may well be fed up of hearing from their kind of grey haired teachers who uh, didn't do their exams very recently, so they might think. So we have organised for a company called Elevate to come in. They use young presenters that students can relate to who have just finished university or sometimes still at university and can share with students the practical skills that they can use based on research that will have the greatest impact and um, Elevate are coming in the Wednesday before half term this term so that students can get from them those important skills um, and then apply them to their revision for the November PPEs. We also conduct this year intervention assemblies and we're letting you in on a bit of a trick of the trade here. We divide the year up by the progress they're making, so how well their results are going, with the level of effort that they are showing and it helps us see the year group into four different groups. The students who are making high progress and high effort. And as you might expect, there are those with low effort and often they're making low progress. We also have students who, despite high levels of effort, aren't always making the progress they need. And finally, those jammy ones that manage to get high progress and low effort. And I must say that this is a very, very tiny number of students each time we analyse this. The idea being then, once we know which group students are in, that we tailor the message that they need quite carefully. And so, you know, for those students with high effort and low progress, they need a very clear message about how they're going to redirect their efforts to ensure exam success and change that low progress to high progress. So you, you, you might hear from your child over the course of the year about how they've been to an assembly and split up and things like that. That's what that's about. We are still awaiting some details on the 2022 examinations. There has not been a final decision made on what that might look like. There's talk of a, a wider choice of topics and exams or that further advanced information might be sent. But again, as soon as we hear, we will be adapting what we do to make sure students can benefit um, as much as possible. So we'll look out for that in the next month or so. Finally, our heads of English and maths talk through some of the key strategies that they think uh, students should employ and how parents can help at home. I'm going to click through these so you can, they're quite detailed slides, so you can pause as appropriate and see what advice they are giving.
We concluded the evening by giving parents some key actions relate to English, math and some more general uh, pointers there. As I mentioned earlier, this slide along with the key dates has been printed up and a copy given to all students. So please uh, ask your child when they get home to get a copy of this. Those dates are really important. Please put them up somewhere at home very prominently. And um, thank you for taking the time to watch this shortened presentation.